focused on flyer news. John Kerry inches his way closer to the White House. Two FHS basketball stars reach the 1,000 point mark. And how will the incoming snow affect us here in Framingham? Stay tuned, flyer news starts right now. FHS and welcome to another splendid edition of Flyer News. Today is a day four with periods running A, C, D, E, F. Or a D-Day with periods one, three, four, five, six. I'm Dina Feldman. And I'm Greg Fulkino. But you know what else I am? Well, what is that, Greg? I'm excited for today's show. Well, me too. After all, we've got a jam-packed show filled with the top news stories. What could be better than that? Hmm, I can only think of one thing. Well, what's that? If the first segment was weather. Well, you are in luck because it just so happens that Allie Lawton is here with a weather segment for you. Take it away, Allie. Good morning, FHS. I'm Ali Lawton here with your FHS Weather Watch. As you can see, we have some snowstorms coming in from the Great Lakes area. Yesterday, it hit New York, and they got about five to eight inches. It's going to hit us today while we're in school. While we're working inside, the snow's going to be working outside to make our evening commute miserable. Our five-day forecast today is going to be snow with highs around 27 and lows around 22. Wednesday, we're still going to have more snow. We possibly might not have school Wednesday morning, but that's a slight possibility, with highs at 20 and low at 12. Thursday, we're going to have some sun again with highs at 30 and low at 15. And then Friday, it's back to snow with highs at 33 and low at 13. And then Saturday, to begin our beautiful weekend, we have some sun with some slight clouds with highs around 20 and low at 14. That is it for me. I'm Allie Lawton. Back to the desk. Thanks, Allie. And now for some sports info. Just recently, senior basketball captain Arch Mitchell broke the 1,000 point mark, making him one of only five people in FHS history to accomplish this feat. Uh, Arch was the second person this year to do this, following Nikki Savageo, who broke the 1,000 point mark earlier this year. Now we have a special segment for you because we have an interview right with Arch talking about his accomplishment. So let's take a look. What's going on, FHS? Drew Korea here alongside. Happy Cap. Giving you a little special sports update this week. We're also uh, alongside Arch Mitchell. Uh, for all those who don't know, Arch just joined a pretty prestigious group of players here at Framingham High School. He was the fifth person ever to join the 1,000 Points Club here at Framingham High. And uh, he did that against our rivals, Natick, where he dropped 36 points. So before your game, did you think you were going to break 1,000 points? Not at all. Um, 32 points is a lot of points to get in one game. So mm -hmm. just try not to think about it and see what happened. Tell me, how good did it feel uh, when you realized that you were a couple points away from uh, breaking this record? felt really good. I mean, I was dripping sweat, but I had the chills also at the free throw line, so. And how good it, did it feel when you got to give the ball to your mom? It felt really good. Um, she was crying. I was crying. I told myself I wasn't going to cry, so yeah. it felt good. How much does uh, Coach Tarlin influence you? I know he's a really great coach, and he pushes you guys, the whole team, to excel. But tell me, how does he influence you as a whole? He gives me a lot of confidence to do the things I do with the basketball, so I'd like to thank him also. Very good. Well, we are very lucky to have such a talented basketball player, but also on the girls' side, Nikki Savage also broke a thousand points, and that was versus Weymouth at home. It was a close game, and she had seven points to break it, so she did that and went over. So congratulations to her, too. I'd like to thank my teammates also. All right, very good. So as always, I am Drew Crea. And I'm Abby Cap. Take it easy. Peace out. Congratulations to both Arch and Nikki. Yes, and now we have a real treat for you. For those of you who have been keeping up with the movements in the political world, you'll know that Massachusetts Senator John Kerry recently won a stunning victory in the Iowa caucus. In fact, we at Flyer News have had the privilege of interviewing him ourselves. So let's take it over to Kevin Connolly, our political correspondent, for updates on Kerry's campaign. And today the Washington Marathon goes through New Hampshire. Our mass senator has met with mass popularity up north. He's carried the torch through Iowa. He's going to New Hampshire looking for another big victory. Flyer News actually had the opportunity to sit down and chat with Senator Kerry. We asked him, among other things, how he first got interested in politics. Uh, when I was a junior at high school, President Kennedy was running, then Senator Kennedy. 
And I was very uh, excited by his race, and I gave my first political speech as a junior in high school uh, to a morning assembly the day of the election. Uh, and from then on, I, I really just found, uh, I found the, the prospect of, of trying to be involved in public life very, very exciting, and I've been involved almost ever since then. The senator also discussed educational issues. After all, this is a high school. A little bit of news to report on from the campaign. The town of Dixville Notch, New Hampshire, voted at midnight. The results are already in. General Wesley Clark won that little town. He got eight votes. Way to go, General. I believe 15 hardcore people voted. It was 20 degrees below zero in the little town. I'll be back with you later to talk about how your favorite candidates did in New Hampshire, who tripped over the Granite State, who's cruising into South Carolina next week. I'm sure the candidates are all glad they'll be campaigning in some warmer weather. That's Political Minute. I'm Kevin Conley, Greg Dina. I'm sending it back to you guys. And now it's time again for our favorite part of the show, to get all the information you need. That's right. Let's send it over to Natalie of the Stoop with Homeroom Headlines. Good morning, everybody. A um, couple announcements for this morning, so listen up. Today, um, there's an Eagle's Eye meeting. That's a school newspaper at 2 o'clock, so if you're interested, you should head down there. It's, I think it's going to be in the TV studio show. It should be a lot of fun. Sports sign-ups down in the athletic office for any spring sports. The 24-hour theater project is going to go on this Saturday. It's a group of writers, students that wrote for 12 hours, then directed over another 12 hours, and then the results are shown that night at 7 p.m. It's going to be 6 bucks at the auditorium. Homeroom starts late tomorrow because of the collaboration day, so be sure not to come into school till 8 o'clock. And finally, congratulations to the art students here at Framingham High. A group of them won Boston Globe Scholarship um, Scholastic Art Awards, so things like the Golden Key and that. We'll have the names down here with Mr. Olson tomorrow and give those students their certificates. That's it for me. Have a good day and stay warm. We're going to head right back up to the desk with Dina and Greg. Thank you, Natalie. It is unfortunate with all of the positive things going on in Framingham that we still have problems facing our community. Recently, there have been countless reports of sex offense in the Metro West area. Investigators have found more than 80 cases of residents with histories of sex offense in Framingham alone. Lauren Matias put together a segment that looks at the investigations currently going on. Let's take a look. People travel the streets of Framingham like they do most other towns. Framingham's newest facade, a refurbished stores and town hall, reflects some of its newest residents, a diverse mix of Latin Americans and Eastern Europeans. But Framingham streets are walked by another more infamous group as well. Framingham hosts one of the state's largest percentage of criminal sex offenders. I looked into prison towns, Walpole, Bridgewater, all these towns conquered, they have nothing like this. Over the past few years, Framingham has become the home of over 80 convicted sex offenders. Officials are saying, remarking about the number of sex offenders are in this area, thinking that Marlboro has a, a, a large amount. Maybe uh, someone will pay attention to the fact that Framingham has even more. The way the laws are now, it seems that the offender has more rights than uh, anybody else. As of today, we have eight level threes in our rape community. and abuse of a child, assault to rape, indecent assault and indecent battery. Indecent assault and battery on a child under the age but of the 14. the emphasis was on how do we protect the rights of these sex offenders and not on how about the kids? Actually, we were accused yeah. of starting a witch hunt. Yes. And which I think is outrageous. But you always want to listen to the term witch hunt because witch hunt is always used by the, those wanting to hide something. They accuse you of running a witch hunt. That's the way they have of neutralizing an effort that you're, you're doing that's making people uncomfortable. And, you know, we're going to have to be a lot more uncomfortable in order to solve this. When I first started looking into this, we had 61 offenders, and we now, as of last week, we had 71. So <laughs> the, the word's gotten out that Framingham's the place to come to. Our report leaves us still with more questions. Why has the state chosen Framingham as a repository for sex offenders? Why isn't there as much public awareness? And who is the next potential victim? This is Laura Matias signing off for Flyer News. Stay tuned for more updates. And sadly, that brings us to the end of our show today. That's right, Dina. But in case you want to see our smiling faces one more time, you can tune into FNTV later today at 5 or 7 o'clock on Channel 8 or 15. That does it for us. We'll be back tomorrow. Hope everyone has a great day. And we're out like FHS will hopefully be tomorrow because we're praying for a snow day.